Hey, from Canada. Ugh. Badge and I have done some uh, investigating, some research uh, regarding the vegetable system. So if anybody has a 7.3 uh, uh, Power Stroke or a, a T444E International, I think we figured it out. Now everybody thinks he drove all the way up here just to see my smiling face. That's not the case. <laughs> Now, the thing about this veggie oil onto the power stroke thing is there's not a whole bunch of information out there. And they, there's a lot of questions that people don't ask. And, of course, me, I ask the questions. So what we're basically come up with is that we're going to run two electric pumps, unhook the, the stock system completely, plug the fuel pump hole, and because... And then run the fuel system through two uh, waste veggie oil solenoids. Now the thing is, is that nobody can tell you how much oil is left in the head. Because these are dead heads. Now the Ford bleeds off the front. And it returns off the front, so it bleeds through. But the International don't. The International has this line coming up here to a pressure regulator right here. This sets your pressure at 35 PSI. So now I'm going to show you something that nobody tells you. Here's the line coming in from the fuel tank. Comes through here through a strainer. Down this steel line to this side of the pump. From this, this is a dual system pump. From this pump it goes to this line, which comes back up here. Okay, it comes up through this line here and into the bowl, the fuel bowl. Now we're getting rid of this. From the fuel bowl, pressures up the fuel bowl, comes back down here at 10 PSI into the bottom of the high pressure pump down there. High pressure pump, it comes out there and it's set at 35, 40 PSI, whatever. That's what this check valve here, this is your pressure regulator. So, what this does, and the international system is great because they're only thinking it's running on diesel. But when you put it to veggie, it changes the whole ball game. So you have to tell the engine what you want. So we're going to tell it that we want it to run on veggie oil. So this system here comes up. The fuel line comes up from the high pressure pump here. Through this line, through here, down here, into the head. The left front head, not the right. The right head comes right from the pump right to there. So anything over 35 PSI is bled through here back to the return line, which is here. And by the way, return line, for those people who might not uh, be familiar, that goes right back to the tank. Like 90% of your fuel coming out of your engine returns to the fuel tank. So you just got to remember that. Because this is a mechanical pump with no regulation. So they regulate it with 35 PSI. So when you're sitting there idling, it's 35 PSI. When you're sitting there going down the road at 100 or 60 miles an hour, it's still 35 PSI. So its thing just keeps pumping fuel. So it just comes up from the pump through here down the return line. And then it comes back through here in the same process all the time. Now the reason we're getting rid of this is this is a whole nomad thing so you know exactly what we're coming from. The filter in here is around anywhere from 15 to 20 dollars. Now the filters we're going to be using are six bucks. So we can change the filters a lot easier. Yeah, I, think then, the la I think the last time I bought this thing, it was like 27 yeah. 28 29 30 bucks or yeah. something. So we're going to get rid of this system. And the problem with this system is, for veggie oil, like there's no problem with the system. Don't get me wrong. It's just saying that for using veggie oil, it gives us more problems. It's one, when it comes up into here, there's a bleed hole right here. And that's how it bleeds the fuel filter out, right? It comes back through here and bleeds down to return all the time, right? So it's just a complete cycle. And then when the engine needs fuel, it'll take it. But this is how they vent the... So we're getting rid of this filter. And, and, that, what we're, and that, by the way, for anyone who's interested uh, to see more information on this, it's called a fuel bowl delete. If you yeah. uh, search YouTube for it, you basically get rid of all the stuff. And then, um, well, Badge can explain the rest. So we're going to do a fuel bowl delete is basically what it is. Plus a high pressure pump delete. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this line off here, take this line off here, the return and the pump, and we're going to take all this and chuck it in the garbage. We're going to come in here. 
I'm just explaining this to you so you can, like my friend Sue Gerling, she'll take a couple days for it to sink in, okay. is we'll put this, I'm going to tell you how we're going to set it up and then you can think about it and then when we put it together you'll say, oh yeah, he told me that. So what we're going to do is put a VO uh, uh, electric valve here which switches between diesel and uh, waste oil or veggie oil, veggie, we'll call it the veggie. And then up here, we're going to do the same thing. And this one here, we're going to run it normal on default. What I mean by default is with no power, you turn the key on and start it, it'll run on veggie, not diesel. Which everybody's saying, what the hell's he doing? Because he's going to run this mostly on veggie oil. So instead of burning out the solenoid, it don't work. So that's why we're going default on the veggie oil and electric on diesel because we figure that maybe jacks will run maybe two to three minutes because I don't even think we're going to, we've seen one here in Drayton Valley that doesn't even, um, he don't switch back and forth. He just runs it on veggie all the time, starts it up. So we're going to try it. I think it'll work, but we're going to try it. This is a trial and error thing. So, but anyway, this is what we're going to do. Put a valve in here to control the fuel coming in. And a valve here to return the, the the return line. Now the reason for the one in the return line is because when you're running on veggie and you want to purge it, you switch it to diesel. Puts diesel fuel into the engine and you purge the veggie oil back to the veggie tank, not the diesel tank. The and, veggie tank. And, and for those people who don't know, including myself, just a short time ago, purging means uh, getting all the uh, veggie oil out of the tank. Uh, because when it sits and it gets uh, cold, it thickens, and when it's, the vegetable oil is thick, um, it's really hard to start or impossible to start. Yeah. So that's basically what we're doing with the fuel system. Is we're going to take this all out, we're going to plug this filter housing so there's nothing there, because I still have a lot of questions. One of the question is, is when we're running on veggie, what's the pump doing? Is it sitting there turning? Is it chewing itself up? Is What's it doing? Nobody can tell me that. So... We'll get rid of it. We're going to run two electric pumps, and um, when we're on veggie, it'll be you turn the switch on, it turns the pump on. When you're on diesel, you turn the pump on. Because another problem with the international diesel, if it runs out of, oil, out of fuel, you got fun trying to get this thing primed. So we're going to put a pump in there, which I call a primer pump, and it'll when it, if it runs out of diesel, it's not going to be a big deal. Yeah, and by the way, so and and for people like me who are not mechanics. If, that means when you run out of gas or diesel, you get air in the system and you can't get the air out. That's why there is a purge valve, which we're air valve back in. right here. So if you got air bubbles in your system, it's not going to start up. So we're going to put one back in. And for the first little while, what we're going to do is we're going to tee this, put a purge valve here and a, a gauge. So that he'll be able to drive down the road and he wants 35 PSI here at all times. So he'll be able to look at that fuel gauge and see... Oh yeah, I got 35, I got lots of fuel pressure. Or if he's going down the road and the fuel gauge drops off, you'll say, why? And then he'll look and see if the pump quit or something like that, right? Just something. Because there's no sense putting all this stuff on the, on the truck if he doesn't know how to use it or can't fix it. It's just not worth, it's not even worth the time. So that's why we're putting a fuel gauge in here. It'll, it'll tell him what the fuel pressure is going into the head, which you want 35 PSI. And this one here, we're going to get rid of the small one because that's a 10-pound, this top part. So we're going to replace that with uh, a 35-pound pump. Almost, we're going to put two veggie pumps on is basically what we're doing. And two electric pumps, and we're going to have two electric solenoids, and it'll work like a top. And then we're going to have one uh, pressure regulator. One to pressure keep the... regulator, which we're going to go, because being a drag racer, everything... If you don't know how to modify it, get a drag racer to work on it. And we're going to go to, to uh, JB's Automotive. We're going to get a Summit regulator, which goes on your gas or whatever. And we're going to put it right here. The fuel lines are going to come up. And then the return line, the veggie valve will be here. It'll be preset at 35 PSI here. And then over that, it'll go back to the return line. Now, the Webasto keeps up to 150 degrees. It don't matter. And it burns like maybe... A half a gallon a day and very little wattage right so the second advantage to this is too is if 
Jacks wants to go to cold weather and put in a, an extra heater, he's got it, the water here. All he has to do is put the heater in, which we have the heater too, by the way. Well, and, and uh, so if, uh, there's, if the coolant is hot, just for all the viewers so you understand yeah. this, because I, 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 I feel you, because it's hard to follow along sometimes. Basically, if we have the hot coolant running through there, these heaters in the front, yeah. right next to the driver, yeah. those are just on a little switch. That's right. And the only power it draws is a 12-volt fan. Yeah. So because it's so pushing can, through this hot this hot water through through the fan. And then that, that will be a heater as well as uh, what Badgerill is about to explain. So, okay, so this is the engine here. And this is the heater system. We'll show you that in a minute. But the water, hot water for the engine comes out here into the heaters. There's three heaters in there which is doing right now and then it comes out goes to the Webasto and by the way the, uh, the Webasto is a coolant heater there's and also the, an air heater but diesel. we have the coolant one that yeah, runs on the coolant one this runs on a, diesel it runs on diesel and then it comes out of there and it's gonna go to the veggie tank and uh, and heat up the Arctic Fox we got the tube that goes down into the tank to heat it up and then it comes back here and it goes back through a uh, fuel filter housing, which warms it up. And so we want the oil 150 degrees by the time it hits the engine. So how we're going to accomplish that is with the Wabasto. And you got the um, veggie tank here. The pickup for the veggie tank, the line, we're going to put down this heater hose all the way to the engine, wrap it in tin foil, yeah, tin foil, and... Um, pipe wrap which is insulation that silver insulation a little bit of insulation so I can almost guarantee you that from the tank to the engine it don't matter if it's 90 below with the Wabasso running that oil will be 150 degrees when it gets here almost guarantee it so that's the root of it now right here you're gonna say well in the summer that's gonna be crazy because he doesn't have air conditioning so we got to keep it cool we're gonna put basically what we're gonna put in here is a hot water tank bypass system on an RV. This is basically what it is. You turn the tap off, turn the tap off, open the bypass. So in the summertime, it comes out of the engine, through the bypass, through the Webasto, through the tank, and back to the engine. It doesn't go through the heaters, so the heaters will be cold. So that's what we're doing with that there. And it's not really a whole bunch of work, but I think it's better for him, because we had that on Danny, but he didn't know he had it on Danny. So the only thing we didn't have on Danny was a bypass. So we're going to put the bypass in. So we'll, I'll take you up front and I'll show you how that's going to work. Okay, now all the, the reason we're showing you this is that it all sinks in because this is a lot of information. I spent five, six nights up thinking about all this crazy crap. But anyway, this is the water coming out of the engine. Goes into the heater system, right? And this is a stepper pump that goes to the back, but we don't need that anymore. So this is the heater hose here. It comes, the heat comes up through here, through the heater, through the other heater, and comes back in a stepper pump here, which pushes it through the other heaters, right? So these are the two taps I showed you. We're going to take these taps and move them back here a little bit, and then we're going to put a bypass in here. So basically what it'll do is we'll turn the taps off, and we'll turn the bypass, because this one here will, this one will, can, connected up to this one and this one here will be connected up to the hose that runs to the back and then they'll come up and come back into this one into the engine so we're going to move this tap up on this hose and put the bypass in and it'll go it'll come through here through the bypass into the heater hose back to the back and come back up so this is how we're cutting out this hose it's all basically there we just have to put a couple another tap in it basically and run some heater hose to the back now, this is one inch we got a whole bunch of one inch so we're gonna try to keep this one inch stuff for this area and then we'll go to uh, three quarter five eighths for the rest of it because we don't need that big volume of water but for the heater of the, of the see if he ever wants to turn the heater on if it's nice and hot then He'll have the volume too because the Vassal will keep pushing it through, right? So that's what we're doing for that one.